chapter 13. The children of Israel again did that which was evil in Yahweh's sight, and Yahweh delivered them into the hand of the Philistines forty years. Here was a certain man of Zor, of the family of the Danites, whose name was Mano, and his wife was barren and childless. Yahweh's angel appeared to the woman and said to her, See now, you are barren and childless, but you shall conceive and bear a son. Now therefore please beware, and drink no wine nor strong drink, and don't eat any unclean thing, for, behold, you shall conceive and give birth to a son. No razor shall come on his head, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb. He shall begin to save Israel out of the hand of the Philistines. Then the woman came and told her husband, saying, A man of God came to me, and his face was like the face of the angel of God, very awesome. I didn't ask him where he was from, neither did he tell me his name. But he said to me, Behold, you shall conceive and bear a son, and now drink no wine nor strong drink. Don't eat any unclean thing, for the child shall be a Nazarite to God from the womb to the day of his death. Then Mano entreated Yahweh and said, O oh Lord, please let the man of God whom you sent come again to us, and teach us what we should do to the child who shall be born. God listened to the voice of Mano, and the angel of God came again to the woman as she sat in the field. But Mano, her husband, wasn't with her. The woman hurried and ran and told her husband, saying to him, Behold, the man who came to me that day has appeared to me. Mano arose and followed his wife and came to the man and said to him, Are you the man who spoke to my wife? He said, I am. Mano said, Now let your words happen. What shall the child's way of life and mission be? Yahweh's angel said to Mano, Of all that I said to the woman, let her beware. She may not eat of anything that comes of the vine, neither let her drink wine or strong drink, nor eat any unclean thing. Let her observe all that I commanded her. Mano said to Yahweh's angel, Please stay with us, that we may make a young goat ready for you. Yahweh's angel said to Mano, Though you detain me, I won't eat your bread. If you will prepare a burnt offering, you must offer it to Yahweh. For Mano didn't know that he was Yahweh's angel. Mano said to Yahweh's angel, What is your name, that when your words happen, we may honor you? Yahweh's angel said to him, Why do you ask about my name, since it is incomprehensible? So Mano took the young goat with the meal offering and offered it on the rock to Yahweh. Then the angel did an amazing thing as Mano and his wife watched. For when the flame went up toward the sky from off the altar, Yahweh's angel ascended in the flame of the altar. Mano and his wife watched, and they fell on their faces to the ground. But Yahweh's angel didn't appear to Mano or to his wife anymore. Then Mano knew that he was Yahweh's angel. Mano said to his wife, We shall surely die, because we have seen God. But his wife said to him, If Yahweh were pleased to kill us, he wouldn't have received a burnt offering and a meal offering at our hand, and he wouldn't have shown us all these things, nor would he have told us such things as these at this time. The woman bore a son and named him Samson. The child grew, and Yahweh blessed him. Yahweh's spirit began to move him in Mahane Dan, between Zor and Eshtal. Chapter 14 Samson went down to Timnah and saw a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. He came up and told his father and his mother, saying, I have seen a woman in Timnah of the daughters of the Philistines. Now therefore get her for me as my wife. Then his father and his mother said to him, Isn't there a woman among your brother's daughters, or among all my people, that you go to take a wife of the uncircumcised Philistines? Samson said to his father, Get her for me, for she pleases me well. But his father and his mother didn't know that it was of Yahweh, for he sought an occasion against the Philistines. Now at that time the Philistines ruled over Israel. Then Samson went down to Timnah with his father and his mother, and came to the vineyards of Timnah. And behold, a young lion roared at him. Yahweh's spirit came mightily on him, and he tore him as he would have torn a young goat with his bare hands. But he didn't tell his father or his mother what he had done. He went down and talked with the woman, and she pleased Samson well. After a while he returned to take her, and he went over to see the carcass of the lion, and behold, there was a swarm of bees in the body of the lion, and honey, he took it into his hands, and went on, eating as he went. He came to his father and mother and gave to them, and they ate, but he didn't tell them that he had taken the honey out of the lion's body. His father went down to the woman, and Samson made a feast there, for the young men used to do so. When they saw him, they brought thirty companions to be with him. Samson said to them, Let me tell you a riddle now. If you can tell me the answer within the seven days of the feast and find it out, then I will give you thirty linen garments and thirty changes of clothing. But if you can't tell me the answer, then you shall give me thirty linen garments and thirty changes of clothing. He said to him, Tell us your riddle, that we may hear it. He said to them, Out of the eater came out fruit, out of the strong came out sweetness. He couldn't in three days declare the riddle. On the seventh day, they said to Samson's wife, Entice your husband, that he may declare to us the riddle, lest we burn you and your father's house with fire. Have you called us to impoverish us? Isn't that so? Samson's wife wept before him and said, You just hate me and don't love me. 
You've told a riddle to the children of my people and haven't told it to me. He said to her, Behold, I haven't told my father or my mother, so why should I tell you? She wept before him the seven days while their feast lasted, and on the seventh day he told her, because she pressed him severely, and she told the riddle to the children of her people. The men of the city said to him on the seventh day before the sun went down, What is sweeter than honey? What is stronger than a lion? He said to them, If you hadn't plowed with my heifer, you wouldn't have found out my riddle. Yahweh's spirit came mightily on him, and he went down to Ashkelon and struck thirty men of them. He took their plunder, then gave the changes of clothing to those who declared the riddle. His anger burned, and he went up to his father's house. That Samson's wife was given to his companion, who had been his friend. Chapter 15 But after a while, in the time of wheat harvest, Samson visited his wife with a young goat. He said, I will go into my wife's room, that her father wouldn't allow him to go in. Her father said, I most certainly thought that you utterly hated her, therefore I gave her to your companion. Isn't her younger sister more beautiful than she? Please take her instead. Samson said to them, This time I will be blameless in the case of the Philistines when I harm them. Samson went and caught three hundred foxes, and took torches, and turned tail to tail, and put a torch in the middle between every two tails. When he had set the torches on fire, he let them go into the standing grain of the Philistines, and burned up both the shocks and the standing grain, and also the olive groves. Then the Philistines said, Who has done this? He said, Samson, the son-in-law of the Timnite, because he has taken his wife and given her to his companion. The Philistines came up and burned her and her father with fire. Samson said to them, If you behave like this, surely I will take revenge on you, and after that I will cease. He struck them hip and thigh with a great slaughter, and he went down and lived in the cave in Adam's rock. Then the Philistines went up, encamped in Judah, and spread themselves in Lehi. The men of Judah said, Why have you come up against us? They said, We have come up to bind Samson, to do to him as he has done to us. And three thousand men of Judah went down to the cave in Adam's rock, and said to Samson, Don't you know that the Philistines are rulers over us? What then is this that you have done to us? He said to them, As they did to me, so I have done to them. He said to him, We have come down to bind you, that we may deliver you into the hand of the Philistines. Samson said to them, Swear to me that you will not attack me yourselves. He spoke to him, saying, No, but we will bind you securely and deliver you into their hands, but surely we will not kill you. They bound him with two new ropes and brought him up from the rock. When he came to Lehi, the Philistines shouted as they met him. Then Yahweh's spirit came mightily on him, and the ropes that were on his arms became as flax that was burned with fire, and his bands dropped from off his hands. He found a fresh jawbone of a donkey, put out his hand, took it, and struck a thousand men with it. Samson said, With the jawbone of a donkey, heaps on heaps, with the jawbone of a donkey I have struck a thousand men. When he had finished speaking, he threw the jawbone out of his hand, and that place was called Ramath Lehi. He was very thirsty, and called on Yahweh, and said, You have given this great deliverance by the hand of your servant, and now shall I die of thirst, and fall into the hands of the uncircumcised. A God split the hollow place that is in Lehi, and water came out of it. When he had drunk, his spirit came again, and he revived. Therefore its name was called in Hakor, which is in Lehi, to this day. He judged Israel twenty years in the days of the Philistines.